Hey everybody, Ronnie here. So I was trying really hard not to get into this one until there was some definitive answers on either side. But it looks like UPS and the Teamsters have walked away from the negotiating table. So on July 31st, the current union contract expires and the Teamsters are saying, hey, we're not working past our contract deadline. The Teamsters have put up their demands. UPS came back with, this is what we can do. They reached an impasse and walked away from the table. Now, they still have the better part of four weeks to get back to the table and iron something out, hammer something out. But... It's not looking too good right now. If the Teamsters walk away from UPS, that's going to have major repercussions across the industry. And honestly, just with the, the consumers, the end consumers, because they won't be able to get their crap. <laughs> I say that, I have crap coming today from UPS, by UPS. So, let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Is UPS going to shut down in three and a half weeks? Or will they realize, oh crap, we've got issues and come back with a better offer for the Teamsters? Alright, I am still taking calls, just so that everybody knows. I have no problem giving advice, helping you get set up. Like I said, the current split with Super Ego is absolutely not about Super Ego. So I still believe very strongly in them. If you have any questions, give me a call. I'll put my number on the screen here. I haven't been doing it the last few videos, but I, I absolutely have no problem talking with anyone about the about Super Ego. With that said, I've had a lot of folks that have asked about fueling. So I want to go ahead and go over some options that I have. Because I am a strong believer that you should never pay retail for fuel. Let me repeat that. Never pay retail for fuel. If you are not getting a discount on your fuel, then you are doing it wrong. Fuel is the one area that we have the ability to save money on. And so take advantage of that opportunity. I'm going to go over three options that I have right here that I use while I'm on the road. The first one is... My old favorite, mud flap. And as a bonus, opened up mud flap today. Haven't been on the road in a couple weeks, so I haven't had a chance. But opened up mud flap today and get a look here. My local, let's see if we can get this in here. But my local truck stop is on mud flap now. So, really simple. What you do is you pull in. You open up mud flap, you get a look at the price. You want to plan things out before you get there. All right. And then click on the green view. It will pop up. Let's see if I can. There we go. That's better. But yeah, it'll pop up. It'll tell you exactly what's going on. And then get your fuel code. You get the fuel code. You walk in to the, to the counter. Tell them you got a mud flap code, show it to them. They ask you what pump you're on. They put it in, you go out, you pump, you come back in, grab your receipt. It's that simple. And I'm so happy to see my local truck stop has finally joined mud flap. Now, second option. And I'm going to cover some information up here because I don't want to fuel for everybody. But here's my TCS card. TCS, that's, that's credit. It settles every week on Monday. 
and then I also have my A to B card that settles every week on Monday also. The reason I, you can set it up to settle on any day you want. The reason that I to, set, told mine to settle on Monday is because you get paid Friday, you gotta have the weekend, they're not gonna settle on the weekend. So I, just in case there's any issues on Friday, I wanna go ahead and set it for Monday, that way there's no issues. The thing is, when you're fueling, number one, and I, I spoke about this yesterday, but you absolutely want to do your pre-tripping. When you get the load, when you get the load information, before you even go to get the load, you want to do a pre-trip, general overview of the entire route. Then every day, when you start your day, before you hit that 14-hour clock, you want to get a look and do a pre-trip for the day, or a trip plan. Pre-trip. You definitely want to do your pre-trip every day also, but you want to do a trip plan for the day. And then, and part of that is when you need to fuel, you're going to plan out your fueling. Look where the best options are. Now, with the TCS card and the A to B card, they have also got apps for the cell phone that tell you where to go and give you prices and things like that. The only reason that I use that I didn't that I did mud flap on the phone is because mud flap isn't a card. Mud flap is actually an app on the phone and they quite often are the least expensive option but to plan out where you're going to go and get your fuel when on, on your fuel days you shouldn't have to fuel every day if you're fueling every day you're probably doing something wrong i know a lot of people you know say hey let's go and you know get just enough fuel to get to the receiver and then we'll figure it out afterwards. You're going to use the fuel any way it goes. Fuel at the least expensive place. Fill up. That's what I do. I fill up every time. The only time that I don't fill up is when there's a really good price just a little bit further down the road. And I just need 20 gallons to to bridge between the two. The, but always use a discount. You saw on those cards, those are not in Ronnie's name. Those are with Ronnie's Trucking Company. And yes, I am so original that I named my company Ronnie's Trucking Company. And I named my channel Ronnie's Trucking Channel. But to always fuel with the best discount you can find in the area. If you have any questions, like I said, I am putting my phone number on the screen for this section. And feel free to give me a call. If you have questions about Super Ego, get, feel free to give me a call. Once again, I am not currently working with Super Ego. This is strictly because I've been accused of being in this as a recruiter for Super Ego. That I'm looking for those recruiting dollar dollars. I'm not. Those, that was never, I, certainly I got some, but that was never the big thing. I never got that much. Don't panic about that. And if you have any questions about fueling, give me a call. Leave it in the comment section down below. And I will talk to you next time. All right. Our final story today comes from Overdrive. I wish I could do a better say who who actually wrote it but it just says overdrive staff on the on the story it did come out yesterday on the 4th of july but back on january 12th a truck driver was involved in a collision that claimed the lives of five people his name was danny tyner he was actually arrested last week and charged with numerous counts including five counts of manslaughter, four counts of endangerment, and one count of tampering with physical evidence. This happened on I-10 in Chandler, Arizona. That's near Phoenix. Interesting side note, when I was nine, ten years old, 
I actually lived in Chandler, Arizona. All right. That's a thing. Uh, the reason for these, and this comes from a statement from the Arizona Department of Public Safety, but they said that Tyner was traveling at 68 miles per hour in a posted 55 mile per hour construction zone. Let's unpack that. All right. On the open highway, I don't have a problem with 68 miles per hour. Everybody knows I am a believer that 65 should be your max, but 68 is not terribly above that. But he was in a construction zone and the speed was posted at 55 miles per hour. And when you're in a construction zone, go the posted speed limit. I'm going to say that again. When you're in a construction zone, go the posted speed limit. Number one, as truckers, if we get a speeding ticket, it is double the speeding ticket, the, sp the fine, as a four-wheeler. And in a construction zone, all fines are doubled. So that means that we pay four times the fine that a four-wheeler would pay on a normal stretch of road. In addition to that, it's an active construction zone. There are people there. That's why they say, slow your roll. Get it down. Don't kill somebody. And it's going to be, if there's going to be an area that is being observed actively by the police four speeders it's going to be a construction zone so he was doing 13 miles per hour over the posted speed limit in a construction zone that's bad as far as I'm concerned that alone makes the crash 100% his fault but that's not as, fa as bad as it gets worse in addition to traveling 68 miles per hour in a 55 mile per hour posted construction zone he was actively using TikTok on his cell phone at the time of the collision actively actively using TikTok on his cell phone at the time of the collision now, I get it. You know, you don't want to be rolling down the road listening to the sound of 18 wheels. My cell phone? Where the heck did I put my cell phone? It's right here. It is connected via Bluetooth to my truck's stereo. As I have as I'm rolling down the road, my phone is reading me a, an audiobook, or I've got it on Sirius XM and it's running me some news or playing some music, or I've got it over on iHeartRadio and it's running local my, my local radio stations or doing some podcasts. But it is not in my hand. It is not playing video. And when it comes down to it, even if, and I would never do this, but even if I had YouTube, for example, playing in the background, there are a lot of things that you can play on YouTube that will keep your eyes on the road and not on the phone. But TikTok is designed primarily to for to have your eyes on the phone as far as i'm concerned he got charged with manslaughter it sounds like he murdered those people he made choices and they were bad choices and 
people died, and now he needs to pay the consequences for his bad choices. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. If you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit the and subscribe button. And I will talk to you next time.